Hello and welcome to Windows Business Weekly. My name is Russell Smith and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft's new project Mocha and whether it's the tool for you. So before we get started, I just want to point out that this video is divided into several chapters. So if you want to jump to any part of the video, you can do that quickly by clicking on the chapters at the bottom of the video and they will then appear on the right hand side of the screen if you're using a desktop or you can select directly from the menu if you're watching on a mobile device. And of course, as ever, if you like the content in this video, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And also, if you'd like to see some similar content from me, then hit the subscribe button. So let's get started. What exactly is Project Mocha? Now, this is a new application for Outlook. It's currently in preview and it's otherwise known as Outlook Spaces. Now, it's a personal application, which means it's not designed for collaboration. So you don't share anything that's in Project Mocha with other people. It's just for you. And it's designed to let you organize information that is spread across other applications that you might find in Microsoft 365. So not just emails and calendar events, but of course, maybe to-do tasks or one-look notes or files that you've got stored in OneDrive for business. So the idea is to bring all of that information and allow you to organize it in one single pane of glass, if you like. Something similar to organizing information on a whiteboard. So within Project Mocha, you can create your own structure. You can decide how you're going to organize your information. So it's not like Microsoft Teams, where somebody in your organization has created a structure and you have to work within the limits of that. So who can use Project Mocha? Well, it's currently in preview, so things might change when the product is made generally available. But for the time being, you need either a commercial Microsoft 365 subscription and your organization needs to enable Project Marker for the tenant because it's turned off by default. And for everybody else, you need a premium Outlook subscription. So that means Microsoft 365 personal or family. And the preview should be enabled by default if you have one of those subscriptions. But it's not available in any of the free uh, Outlook services that Microsoft offers. So you will have to have some kind of paid subscription to get access to it. But again, that might change in the future. Now, Project Mocha only works with Exchange online mailboxes. So if your organization is using a hybrid exchange uh, setup where you've got an on online exchange server and you've got your on-premises exchange server, your mailbox must be located in the exchange online server and not on-premises. And at the moment, this is only available in the browser. So if you want to use this uh, on, a, on a mobile device, well, there is no application for it. Again, there might be in the future. Of course, you could load it into a mobile browser, but it's definitely not optimized, optimized for that, at least at this stage. So this is very much about the desktop and the browser. It doesn't even work in the desktop Outlook application. But again, Microsoft might bring it to Outlook at some point in the future. So let's, have, uh, let's head over to the PC and look at how to set up and start working with Project Mocha. So here you can see that I'm in Outlook. And if I come down to the tasks, which are at the bottom, you can see here I've got the usual items like mail, calendar, uh, and files. If I click the more items, so the three ellipses, the dot, dot, dots, because Project Mocha has been enabled in this uh, Microsoft 365 tenant, I have access to it here. So all I have to do is click Project Mocha. And you can see 
now that it's loading. So that will just take a few seconds. So Microsoft has provided a series of templates that you can use to quickly create uh, a mocker space. Now you can have just one mocker space or as many mocker spaces as you like for different projects. So he, here you can see they have weekly plan, project plan, and basically these uh, give you some predefined items and buckets, and we'll have a little bit more about how that works in a second. I've already created a plan here called Windows Business Weekly, uh, or you can just create a new space yourself without any templates. So if you click here, new space, let's just have a look at how this works. We call it test, for instance. You can invite people to the project, so I'll add myself to the project. You can add keywords. Now, Mocha will search for emails and calendar events according to the keywords that you put in here. Now, you can search for these keywords later. You don't have to do it at this stage. But let's say, for instance, I want to search for something connected to Project Mocha. And even at this point, you can still choose one of those predefined templates if you want, or just hit create to create a new space, uh, a new blank space. I'm going to cancel that because I've already created one here called Windows Business Weekly. So let's open that up. So let's have a little uh, look here around the uh, interface, if you like. So we've created our space. And now we can basically search for keywords. If we come over here to the right hand side of the screen, I can expand search. And by default, it will show whatever keywords I put into those three boxes when I created the space initially. But I can search for additional keywords in the search box there, and it will bring up a different set of messages and events. Now, you can see here, for instance, I have an email called Project Mocker User Experience. And if I want to add that to my space, all I need to do is bring it across and drop it onto the space. And it's as simple as that. I can also click Events and do exactly the same thing for, for this. So I can just drag that across, set up a test mocker space, and there we have it. Uh, recorded on our space. And it's really as simple as that. If I want to run an additional search, I can also filter it so I can decide which Outlook folder I want to search in. If we're searching for events and it's restricted to calendar, I can put a starting date and an ending date, and I can decide whether the item has an attachment or not. So there are various filters that you can also put there. Now, this is the isn't the only way to get items onto the mocker space. You can also do it from within Outlook itself. So if you have an email, for instance, you can just click on the free ellipses more. And there's a, just an option there, add to mocker, and you choose the space. And anything that you add in Outlook appears here under this captured pane. And you will see all of your captured items from Outlook, your messages and your events there. And here, this just allows us basically to modify the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, space properties. So we can go back and just change, uh, you know, we can add people here. These are the people that we are looking for uh, when we search. So if I want to find messages from particular people or events where particular people have been invited, for instance, I would add them to this list. This isn't about sharing this space with other people. That can't be done. This is a personal application. This is just about what you will search for. Okay. So uh, let's move on. So we've looked at uh, searching for email and events. You can do that in the pane there. And so we can also add items using this menu on the left hand side of the screen. So I'm going to come back to buckets uh, later in the video. But let's have a look at these other kinds of item that we can add. So we can add, for instance, a note. So I can just say, okay, here's a test note. 
And with all of the items, you have various options in the More menu, so the free ellipsis here. So for instance, I can select a color. So let's we'll set that to blue, maybe. I can set uh, to move it to a bucket, but we'll talk a bit about that later. I can set a due date, so I'm going to set that for Friday. And in the due date as well, I can also mark it as completed when I've decided that task has been done. And I can delete it basically from the space or resize the card. And once it's there, I can drag it around. And you can see there, that's really easy just to position wherever I want. So these uh, note items are actually uh, Outlook notes, and they're accessible in the Sticky Notes application on Windows 10 and in the Notes folder in Outlook. So what else can I do here? I can add a link. So this could be a hyperlink to a website, for instance. So uh, I could put Windows Business Weekly's website there. Uh, you could put a link to a SharePoint document in, in a library, for instance or to a OneDrive document that's been shared with you. Um, you have various options uh, about what you put into the enter URL box. So I'm just going to type here, I don't know, HTTP. I'm going to put, let's just put bbc.com and there we go. And again, if I click on the ellipses there, I get the option to open the item. Uh, rename it, set the color, uh, the due date, uh, move it to a bucket and delete it just like any other item basically. Okay, what else have we got here? So that's URLs. Uh, we can add uh, to-do items, so we can add a task. Uh, have I got a task added here already? Uh, I think, yep, you can see a task here, record webinar. Uh, so I can just complete it by clicking Click in the uh, circle there, much like you do in the to-do application. Uh, I can add a goal. So what is my goal? It's very similar to a task, really. So to complete this recording, and I can set a date here again. Let's make sure it's done by Friday. OK, and that's it. That's fine. So I'll go back and there are various other things. I can add information about the weather. If I click more here, uh, I can access mapping through location or I can add a contact. So I can add a person uh, to this space as well. So there's lots of different things that you can add here. Now you might have noticed here that we have this green area on the screen uh, that says to do. Now this is actually a bucket. So if you're familiar with things like uh, Microsoft Planner and Microsoft Project, you'll be familiar with the idea of buckets. And basically, they're an, uh, a way of being able to logically organize information. So to create a new bucket, I just click bucket here. Uh, I'm going to say, let's call this bucket completed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the color to uh, green. And oh, no, let's sort of go green there. So let's set it to uh, blue. OK. And I can also set a due date uh, for everything that goes into that bucket if I want, but I'm not going to do that right now. And that's it. I'm done. So I'm just going to drag that bucket over here. And then I can add uh, an item to it. So for instance, maybe I want to add the Project Mocha User Experience card, and I just add it. And as you can see, it's a little bit buggy and has disappeared. So let me just see what happened to that. I don't know what happened to it. As you can see here, I can basically uh, expand and decrease by zooming in and zooming out the canvas. Let me try adding this. Oh, there you go. So it worked. So I can add as many items or cards as I like. So I can just move this and let's move this to here as well. So you can see that the process of dragging and dropping items into buckets is a little bit buggy at the moment, but then this is in preview. So that's kind of to be expected. Now, as you can see here, uh, I'm able to zoom in and zoom out. As I said, I can reset the size. I can also 
move the screen around like this and you can see this square down in the bottom right hand corner kind of shows me where my cards are just in case I get a bit lost. So uh, this idea of this canvas or this space if you like along with the ability to, to add buckets gives you a kind of a cross between uh, a visual organizer and a project management tool. So it's kind of a cross between the two things if you like. So what exactly is, is this? What kind of tool is it? So one of the problems with Microsoft 365 is there are so many different tools, it's hard to know which one to use and when uh, each tool is best to use for different circumstances and scenarios. So what would I say about this at the moment? Well, the first thing is that it's in preview. So it's not complete. It is a little bit buggy, a little bit rough around the edges. Um, but uh, you have to do you have to remember that. So if you're going to roll this out to the users in your organization, you have to answer the question, are you prepared to support it? If you're going to enable it for your own personal account, then you have to be prepared for some glitches, of course. Um, so considering that it's not really a project management tool as such, but does have some of those capabilities like uh, buckets, for instance, and it's a visual aggregator, it kind of comes quite close to OneNote because many people use OneNote uh, for organizational purposes. So what I, what I think about it at the moment is that this tool is easier to use than OneNote. It's designed to be a little bit simpler. Um, but if you're already using OneNote to organize information, there are, you know, you should probably stick with it because OneNote, uh, while it doesn't have the project management features like buckets, for instance, it does have pretty much everything else in terms of the kind of items that you can add to it. And it's more feature rich and it does allow for collaboration. So you can share your OneNote notebooks with other people and work on them in real time, which is a feature that probably many people uh, will be using right now. And you definitely can't do that with Project Mocha. And that is not uh, on the cards because, as I said, this is designed as a personal application, not something that is designed to be shared. So in summary, if you're using OneNote, you probably want to stick with it. If you're looking for a tool to help you organize stuff, then this is definitely worth looking at if you understand or you need something that is just about your own personal information that doesn't need sharing and you're looking for something that is easy to use that brings together all of the information that you might have stored within Microsoft 365. OK, so we'll be coming back to Project Mocha uh, when it comes out of preview. If there's enough interest in Project Mocha, I will make another video on how to enable it for commercial Microsoft 365 tenants. Again, if you're running Microsoft 365 family or personal, you shouldn't need to enable it. It should be already there uh, enabled for you. Uh, you just need to open it, basically. Uh, so write in the comments if you'd like me to create that video. If you found any of the content useful, then please uh, hit like. and Also subscribe to my channel and I'll be back soon with some more content for you.